So, so getting back to the GM issue, and you know about Steve Marsh and his yeah. uh, litigation, you're on farms, you know, day in day out. How do you think um, Steve's, Steve Marsh's case against his neighbour will be received by the agricultural community? Yeah, you know, that's always a thing. The GM, uh, like GM uh, canola spoilage on uh, Steve's property that he lost his organic certification and then the court case against the neighbour. In the community of course it's very painful because it's uh, mate against mate and it's a very difficult dividing situation that should have been solved at, at government level with the corporations way before. So now it's fought out in the community and it can be a very painful process from both sides and I don't have any other uh, recommendation about that because it's a hard slog and it can only be avoided if governments take charge and governments dismiss the whole GM production system. Because it was already very clear in Canada that five years after the Canadians introduced canola, there was already the non GM canola seed from rest seed growers of those batches, already 26% were contaminated with GM. And 10 years later, so after 10 years of GM canola, the, the same researcher studied the seed lots of non-GM canola again, and then 96% of all those seed lots were contaminated with GM. And some of them, like 13%, was more than 2% contaminated. Because if we, if we call contaminated, like it's a 0.1% GM in a crop we call contamination. Don't eat plants on a biological crop that grows on a healthy soil, because that soil makes the plant healthy. And like when I gave that talk, at uh, CSRO as a seminar, scientific seminar, five years ago, six years ago, at question time, people said, oh, we, you, you can't make plants resistant to insects and diseases because we need chemicals. We always need chemicals to kill them. And my simple statement is, we humans would not be here on planet Earth because insects could have eaten all our food all the time. Why, they didn't, why didn't they do that? They came to plants they couldn't digest, they couldn't eat, so they stopped eating. And that's the plants that we can now grow again on healthy soils, because the plant knows how to be strong against insects and diseases. It, it builds all the cell walls in a, in a way that it can survive. That's how life evolved, and that's how we can bring it back. Uh, can you talk to us a little bit about uh, the latest literature uh, or the latest paper published, open source, around Roundup and the suggestion that it may uh, be implicated in birth defects yeah. and other causes. Yeah. yeah, like the Roundup story is, is very interesting because like it was released in the 70s and with a, with, a, with a label under it, oh this is a benign herbicide, so we can get rid of Paraquat. And then the, the Glyphosate was used more and more, but it was only when we started with the, the, the Roundup tolerant varieties that the, the, they increased like 15 fold the amount of glyphosate Roundup used around the world. And that amount of use of these uh, herbicides then created the resistance. Because I talked with one scientist that was pro GM and in the weeds, and I asked him, well, if you are interested in preventing weeds growing on farms, why are you working with GM uh, wheat crops? Weed, because they spray Roundup on the whole paddock and then you use Roundup to control and you get resistance. He said, no, no, we, we use it in the right way. I said, how many times can you spray Roundup on a paddock before you get resistance? And he said, 13 times. I said, if we introduce Roundup ready crops and then you have to spray twice in a season to kill the weeds, and then you introduce, your, like you have Roundup corn and Roundup soybean and then Roundup uh, loosen, so you get all the land use is Roundup ready. So, how many times then in, in 10 years' time you have all the resistances, and then what happens then? Oh, then we have to work on a new technology. I said, technology doesn't solve our problems. We have to start working with the natural system, and with the natural system we build the resistance to insects and diseases, and, and weeds that are a problem don't grow as rapidly because we, we don't feed weeds with 
nitrogen fertilizer.